magnificent support that he knows as much as anybody that this will not be the straightforward task some expect it to be. Newcastle's road to promotion, they hope, will surely be not without sizeable obstacles. Is coming to the near post, a shout for handball against Tunney Cliff, but in the end, that's all it was. Well, I'm not sure the referee has got this one right because it was a clever little pullback. Good movement initially from Matt Ritchie. Good pullback. Is the arm out? Well, I'll tell you what, that's a penalty. It has to be a penalty. I'm surprised Simon Hooper's missed that. The arm is out. Attacks the space and hits the shot and sells with difficulty. And the rescue act performed by Paul Dummett. And here's Anita, who stayed on side. Gail racing to get in there in the middle. Richie! He's button there to deny it. Perez. Might get it under his spell, but Jan Matt is there. Here's Malone. Malone again. Chats on here. Will Fulham be made to play, but not taking it. Jobby. Richie round the corner. Domic. Gale. Richie. Oh, terrific block, was it? A block with arm or hand. Clever play from Gales. A good strike from Matt Ritchie. And that is that. It is a fabulous start for Fulham. Matt Smith with the breakthrough just before half time when he was not picked up at a set piece. But the post match inquests will centre on what Rafa Benitez, with justification, will feel were two clear penalty shouts. Rafa, that's a result this evening that will have surprised a number of people. Has it come as a big shock to you? To be fair, we said before that they could be difficult. We knew that they could play. Uh, this way and after we didn't play at the level that we were expecting so we were too anxious uh, giving the ball away sometimes easily and uh, then we conceded in a corner and that was that's it apart, uh, after that it was just to manage the game we had some chances but uh, you have to score you have to manage the game and we didn't do it well there were a couple of occasions tonight when you and your bench and the players had strong appeals for penalties what were your thoughts on those on the bench, it seems that was penalty, especially the first one, but uh, it was not given. So you have to be disappointed, but uh, carry on. And then still, I think that uh, we had to play better. How frustrating is it when incidents like that go against you? No, it uh, could be part of the game. So you were expecting at the beginning of the season maybe more attention, but uh, uh, we were not playing at the level that we have to play, and then we cannot just complain about these things. The manner in which you conceded your goal... How concerning was that? It was a mistake. When you have man-to-man, um, -man, uh, people like to talk about some marking, when you have man-to-man, -man, if you made a mistake, it's a free header, so we have to be sure that the next time uh, we'll be more aware of that. You're a manager that likes to encourage his teams to go forward. Offensively tonight, though, did you expect more from your players? Yeah, I think we didn't play at the level that uh, we wanted to play, so we were giving the ball away easily, we couldn't hold the ball in attack and we had some chances but still we didn't play at the, like we have to play you know, if you want to score goals and uh, win games not just uh, with clean sheets, like conceding and uh, not conceding and just scoring goals you have to be much better in attack Your captain's come in here tonight and said that's something of a wake up call for the players what have you said to your players this evening? Yeah, the same so we have to realise that there will be a tough um, competition and we have to be much better. Rafa, thank you. Thank you.
What's going on people, it's your boy Fordy, aka Ford Have Mercy and Newcastle United have suffered their first defeat of the Championship season to Fulham. Yes, Fulham. Bit of a shocker for me, but at the same time I'm happy and you're thinking, why are you happy? You're a Newcastle United fan. Well, I'm happy that we got it out of the way in the first game because like Rafa said, there will be blips during the season and I'm happy that it's happened at the first time of asking because what we can do now, we can learn from our mistakes and then go on to win the championship. I still believe we're going to do it. I still believe we're going to be crown champions. But again, we just need to get over these critical errors that we saw throughout the whole game. Now, let's start off with the team lineup, shall we? Team lineups, sales and goal. Now, you know my thoughts on him. I'm not sold on him. And again, a couple of shaky moments in the game proved me just right. Shot came in, I'm not sure who it was from. Again, he came right down him, right down the middle, should I say. And again, he had two options. He could either palm it out or catch it. He stumbled and again, it went back into play. And again, it went very, very close to scoring a goal. After that, job's a good one. For me, he still needs to prove his place. And again, even in the game in Doncaster, when he chipped or he tried to chip a player and they ended up bringing him down for the penalty, nah. My trust is gone at the moment. Yama, what can I say? I mean, does he want to be here? No, probably not. But again, while he's on Newcastle United's books, while he's still getting paid a fair wage to be here, I think he should put in a shift. And again, all too often he was getting roasted, all too often he was getting caught out up, up the field and not tracking back. And again, it's the same old story for me. In the next game, I wouldn't mind if he got replaced by either Anita or even young James Derry. Centre half positions, this is going to pay me to say it, but the cells had a bit of a stinker, if I'm honest with you. At fault for the goal, which I'll get into in a bit, bit more detail. Um, and again, he just kept playing those big lofty balls forward. I'm, I'm not a fan of those balls at all. And then the same with Hanley as well. He still doesn't look match fit for me at all. Still looks kind of a couple of yards off the pace. And again, it just showed as well with someone who's who had a bit more pace to him with Aluko just charging him down every given moment. Then that leads me on to Paul Dummett. Now, how do I describe this without trying to swear? Um, just atrocious, basically. I mean, the skill that Adoy did on him, which has pretty much been going viral this past couple, or this day and yesterday, just sums up Paul Dummett as a defender. Literally, come into a doy, it's gone off his back. Dummett is probably still spinning to this day, and then the doy's gone the other way around and created a chance from that. Just tactically, I wouldn't say inept, but close to it, off the pace, and again, for me, probably the wrong position, if I'm honest with you. Yes, he plays left back. I've even put it into my team going forward into this game, but at the same time, probably better off at a centre half, if that. Now, going into midfield, a couple of highlights in this midfield and quite a few lowlights in this midfield. Richie had a decent game, probably one of the only two to come out of this game with their heads held high. Um, had a couple of decent chances, probably the best chance for Newcastle United in the game. And then obviously the handball incidents, which we'll get into quite shortly. Hayden, again, another one who might be able to say, yeah, I had a decent game, got the ball down, distributed decently, um, but at the same time, got caught out too many times by Kearney. Alongside him, Colbeck, do I need to say any more? I mean, it feels like to me, Colbeck's brought, been brought in and he's actually gone backwards since he's come from Sunderland and it pains me to say that honest to God I mean again another person who I wouldn't mind seeing you know outed out of the team or at least rotated out of the team because again not good enough to be honest with you not good enough at all and then the last one that really really baffled me in this midfield was Anita I know everyone loves Anita I mean he's cheeky he looks cute you know he's tiny and all the rest of it you just want to kind of hug him but at the same time Give this guy a break, man. Let him know what his preferred position is. I mean, those those type of utility players don't know the flipping head from their ass. Basically, they don't know where they're coming or going. First minute, oh, one minute he's playing in right midfield. Next minute he's playing right back. Then he's playing defensive midfield. Bloody hell, put some flipping gloves on him. He'll play in goal as well. 
<sighs> enough said about that one. And then up front we had Perez. As I said before, I should have stuck to my guns with Perez because initially when I put my team out at the start of the league, I didn't have Perez in there. Because I thought Diame would have signed in time to play and I put Diame in there. And again, to be honest with you, I was right in the first instance. Too lightweight, found out too easily and at the same time wasn't effective enough. And then the last one was Dwight Gale. As much as I love the guy, again, he pretty much went missing. And it was not down to him. You know, you can only feed off what he's getting and now it's basically scraps. He had nothing to feed off absolutely. <sighs> right, so let's get into the game now. So the game kicked off in a decent fashion for both teams. I mean, there's chances created at both ends. Um, Aluko, I believe it was, you know, caught Hanley out and Hanley made a last ditch challenge. Um, was it a penalty? No, Hanley just got there in time um, to clear his lines and then you know, get us away from danger. Up the other end, Perez went near, should I say, with a free kick. Um, after that, not a lot to really shout about. I mean, up until then, it was kind of even Stevens, And then after that, pretty much the goal came. I mean, same old story with Newcastle United. Not much has changed in that instance. You know, Hanley gave away a corner. Corner ball came in. Lascelles was blocked off, um, and I have to say it was Lascelles' fault anyway with the goal. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm still saying that's that's Lascelles' man, even if he got blocked off. And then Matt Smith just buried it in the bottom corner, and then goalkeeper had no chance whatsoever. Um, really and truly, with that situation, they've done their homework on us. You know, our Achilles heel is free kicks, corners, set pieces. You know. And then they've just done their homework on us. Again, we're not organised enough to say, you take that man, you take that man. We should be you know, covering all grounds in all scenarios at set pieces. Yes, people are going to use you know, tactics like pinching or, or pushing or blocking off men. We need to be basically aware of all of that and more to make sure that we've got a sturdy defence. One thing I want to add to that mix as well is that Mitrovic needs to start. I know he's banned for four games, so we've got three more games without Mitrovic, but even still, a, a big strapping centre forward is getting rid of those balls. I mean, we've had it done before when we've had Andy Carroll on the team. We've brought him back um, when we need to defend corners. And again, who could we bring back who's playing up front for us? What? Gale and Perez. The same two that was playing up front who are four foot tall at best, you know, 150 pounds soaking wet, and at the same time we're playing long lofty balls up to the top. That does not make no sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. Anyway, I know, um, and also, if any Fulham fans are watching this, I'm not taking credit away from you guys, but at the same time, I was very optimistic about this game, same as, you know, 50 odd thousand Geordies as well. I mean, we all thought it was coming into this game, going to win at Fulham and then go on to bet, bigger and better things after that. But credit to you guys. You put a graft in, you did your homework, you, had, you dominated play, especially with the key players, was Kearney, absolutely dominated midfield. Aluko caused so many problems. And again, you just sussed us out, sussed us out basically. I mean, throughout the whole game, playing to, our, playing to your strengths and again, identifying our weaknesses and that was it. That's what basically won the game, you know. Anyway, going on from there, we was 1-0 down. Um, we tried to get back into it but in the first half, but nothing really came of it after that. Going on into the second half now, um, no changes were made up until the 60th minute, but again, things started to pick up now. I think it was only around about the 65 minute mark when we started to actually you know, pick up the pace of play, which is another thing as well that kind of frustrated me as well. We're 1-0 down at half time. Surely Rafa should have had a rant in there and say, look, pick up the pace. Switch up the tactics, stop hitting the long ball, especially to the likes of Gale and Perez. Play out wide with your width, because again, that's where we create the danger. And long behold, that happened. The best chance of the match fell to Matt Ritchie. I think it was out wide on the left with Iosi Perez. He plays the ball in across the floor. Matt Ritchie drills it, and again, it's just straight at the keeper. You know, an inch or two either side, and it's going in. It is going in. Back in it, 1-1, we're back in it. And again, at least we're getting a point out of the game. But no, drills it right at the keeper. Before that, should I say, oh, sorry, I missed out this chance as well. Before that Stonewall penalty in the first half, should I say, Matt Ritchie, blatant penalty. I mean, balls out wide to him on the left. 
try to cross it into the box, which is a good thing. And then at the same time, I can't remember who the defender was. It might be Nadoy, it might be someone else. And again, he's basically trying to fly through the air with his Superman arms. And again, it's hit him square on the arm. You know, it's not like, oh, he's protecting his face. No, square on the arm. And again, no penalty. No. Something that we're going to have to live to deal with throughout the whole of the season because championship officials, referees, linesmen, basically they're a frustrating bunch. <laughs> I'll put it that way, basically. So again, it's something that we need to deal with. It's a chance that's gone begging, but at the same time, we've got to deal with it and move on. Anyway, back into the second half. I just need to address that. And again, a couple of chances were made. Change were made at the 60th minute. We brought off Colback finally. Um, for Aaron's, I believe. We also brought on John Joe Shelby. <sighs> Don't get me started on that one. Um, and at the same time, we also brought on Adam Armstrong, who looked lively, but at the same time, same scenario with Gale and Perez. You know, too small, and at the same time, we haven't got a big man next to him to, to win the knockdowns, basically. All in all, full on one out, run out, should I say, comfortable winners. And in fact, they had more chances to make it two and even three nil. Uh, I'll have to be blatantly honest with that one. Am I disappointed? Of course I am. I'm a Newcastle United fan. I love the club. Um, and again, it was great to be down there in London. I mean, I spent, what, 14 hours in one day travelling to and from London to go and watch that. Um, even though I didn't get a ticket at the same time, I got to meet loads of YouTube fans. Shout out to you guys. I've got loads of footage to come out, especially with you guys in it as well. But to, to travel 14 hours out of a 24-hour day to see that pile of crap, I'm sorry, but that's not good enough. And again, yes, people are going to say, you know, why are you overreacting 40? Well, at the same time, let me put it to you like this. Yes, the revolution has begun. Yes, we spent a pretty penny on getting players in. We had five new debutants, you know, playing. But again, let's be honest, we are expected to do well in this division. Regardless of who's come and went, you know, regardless of who wasn't playing, we were expected to do well and starting from the off. Now, as I said before at the start of the video, I'm happy, or not happy, should I say, um, well, I'm glad, should I say, that it's happened now. It's happened now, we've got this out of the way, we can learn from our mistakes, which are get the ball down on the green stuff, play, play out wide to our strengths, load up the box, get the balls into there, and again, create chances for the key people. Now, the key people are, in my book, okay, when Mitrovic comes back, he has to start for so many different reasons. One, offensively, he offers the knockdowns. He offers, you know, getting us a further 20 yards up the pitch. Also, defensively, in the free kick situation where it could have been possibly him blocking someone off, you know, or him winning that ball instead of Matt Smith. So, again, he offers so much and so much more to what we have with Gail and Perez. And I'm sorry, but Perez, I'm not saying he's not good enough, but he plays well with a big man. If you look back at last season when he had Mitrovic in the side, he was either playing well out on the left where he's